Hello, everybody. Um, we're going to get started in a moment. Let's just get a couple of people in here. See what's going on. We're going to have a lot of fun today. I'm going to be building off what I did last week with you guys. So I hope you're tuning in. Um, so you know what? Let's just begin. Let's roll the intro. Hello again. Um, so today what I want to do to, with you guys are um, building off what we did last week. Last week I talked about, uh, you know, how to create classic cartoon characters and we went over basic shapes and how things go together. And I had a question that I guess I misunderstood or, or the person um, didn't write it in a way. It, it doesn't matter what it, what happened. Um, but I mentioned shape language and, um, it's very important in character design. That's what I want to talk about today is how characters look based on shapes. And we're going to create some characters. All right. So let's move over to the computer screen and we'll zoom in over there. So, let's just move that over a bit. And I'm going to change my color. Let's go to kind of a reddish. I like drawing in red. Sometimes blue, you know, the old style stuff there. So, um, okay, so let's discuss drawing uh, characters. All right, so we last last week I showed shapes like a circle, right? I showed this kind of rectangle or square shape, and I showed a triangle, right? And And so I have a circle, square, triangle. So this is what we went over last week. I talked about basic shapes and how we put shapes together. And remember, I even drew a character like Chili Willy, which was this kind of curvy rectangle and a bunch of shapes together. And, you know, I had, I had Chili Willy, right? And, you know, so he was these simple shapes. He was round. He was cute. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but I did mention that if we used like boxy shapes, we got more of a kind of this tough guy type of character, right? Here's it's almost like a Frankenstein's monster. And if we use a triangle, usually we get obviously someone who's going to be a little bit more kind of kind of evil like you know the character i just drew had a weak back but maybe they don't need it because they you know they're hunched over and they're always kind of scheming together and feel free to ask questions if you have questions all right so i have these <clears throat> shapes here round equals cute okay the square equals tough and triangle equals evil or just bad. Okay. So I've created a bunch of characters throughout my career. Um, my most famous is probably Plunger Pup, which was about a dog who fights crime with a magic plunger. And when I designed Plunger Pup, I used this rectangle and i used a uh this this kind of oval shape 
all right? Because when I put it together, there is acuteness that forms or hopefully forms. And one of the things I did, even though I'm using these rectangular shapes, I'm rounding off a lot of it. Rounding off the shapes, even if it, you know, still give the illusion of tough or the object that it is, even if it's round because it has a boxy look to it. And his ears. And so I'm just gonna color him in. And the people joining, thank you. Don't forget if you have questions, I'm happy to answer. We're talking about character design today. And I used that upside down triangle kind of rectangular shape that shows hero. Um, you know, like a like a, a broad chest. And I'm gonna have to zoom out a bit to this here. Now I want to talk about how I created this character um, and really more on, on the construction than anything. But when I was a kid, this is how Plunger Pup came into, um, came into existence. I don't remember what grade I was in. I was in high school, early high school, probably like maybe ninth grade. And one of my favorite cartoons at that time was Darkwing Duck. I loved the Disney afternoon. I'd come home and watch it. And sometimes I'd watch an episode twice because um, I'd get home from high school around uh, 2.30. And on one of the cable channels, Disney afternoon started at 2.30. So if it was gummy bears or ducktails, whatever was on at 2.30... I watched that. And then I went on, um, and then at three o'clock would start on another channel. So if I really, really liked that episode of Darkwing, du uh, I mean, Gummy Bears or DuckTales, I'd rewatch it at three o'clock and then just continue the Disney afternoon onward from there. Um, if I didn't feel like rewatching it, I just went through it again. And if there was an episode, like let's say whatever was after uh, DuckTales, say Chippendales, Rescue Rangers, I like that, I could rewatch it right after. So um, I would do a lot of uh, a lot of Disney Afternoon. I loved that show. Not the show, but that, that um, series of shows. And there was a character on Darkwing Duck named Mega, uh, Megavolt. And Megavolt had this plug on his head kind of looked like this right and I uh, was homesick and I was watching some videotapes of the cartoons that I that I've recorded and I looked and I said you know what if we remove these pieces and put a stick in there to look like a plunger and being sick I didn't realize that Megavolt was a rat and not a dog so I drew a dog with a plunger otherwise it might be plunger rat or something and and the original plunger pup um I don't remember his exact face but I started with the plunger on the head and I kind of I, I kind of kept I, know, I remember his face was similar. I think I had circle eyes before I went to the kind of opened eyes here. 
and he had his smile. And the reason he's got the ring around his, his neck here is I believe uh, Megavolt had one, right? And he was a little more cartoony, so he had this kind of bean-shaped body. And when I do... Because um, originally, even though he I, I made him a comic character, he was always meant for animation. So I think when I designed him, he was a little bit more animated. And I'm not going to draw the plunger in his hand right now, but he did have a plunger in his hand. And he had the symbol right here. And he had these crosses just like um, just like uh, Megavolt had because on Megavolt's chest, he had an outlet. Okay? So I was basically just kind of ripping off Megavolt. And kind of had these things on the side here. He had a belt that went across. Um, he had some gloves on. And at one point, at one point, I remember through my designs, he actually had plungers. And I don't remember if this was his first design. I have to look it up. He had plungers coming off, off his wrist. He was able to use it like I thought about um, Transformers and how the Transformers... You know, the, the Decepticons always had their, you know, this is their arm, let's say, right? That's their hand. They always had these cannons, you know, that connected off. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe, I, maybe I'll do that. And so that was one of the designs. And he had these straps going around him. Uh, I have the design somewhere. I don't remember exactly what it was like, but I remember that was part of the design. Now, when I was creating characters for plunger pup um i uh you know i'm just going to delete this here when i created uh characters for plunger pup i was creating lots i'm sorry i don't know if you hear my cat he he kind of snuck into the studio right now and he's going to need a little little love um but so Anyway, when I was when I was drawing um, when I was drawing Plunger Pup and creating the characters, I wanted to do something that I've always liked in cartoons, and this comes from my love of Hanna Barbera. Um, Hanna Barbera had a way of designing characters, and th their characters always kind of look the same. So it doesn't matter. Like, let's say I'm drawing Yogi Bear, and this doesn't have to be a perfect Yogi, right? And he's, he has his eyes over here, and this does not look anything like Yogi, so I apologize. Um, actually, his face, I think, comes back more, his snout there. Right? And here's his head, the back of the head, and then he had a collar that had a tie on it, right? Um, when Hanna Barbera was designing characters... And I don't want to use actually William Hanna and Joe Barbera. I don't remember how much um, they had in, uh, input in design they had. I'm sure they had approval. But uh, one of their original designers was a guy named Ed Benedict. And Ed Benedict is one of the most amazing character designers I've ever I've ever looked at. I loved his, uh, his you know, he designed the look of the Flintstones and, you know, some of the animal characters. And so, th like I said, this is a terrible Yogi Bear. Don't. Yeah, I could draw much better. But he created what we call breaks. Or I don't know if he was the original inventor, but he designed breaks into these characters, right? And all the characters, you know, Flintstones, whatever it is, had these breaks around them, right? This was to help their limited animation. So with limited animation... The idea was, um, the idea was, we don't have the amount of money to produce the the same amount of work a theatrical short would. This is for television, so we can't constantly do frame by frame animation and waste all that paper, waste all that ink, waste all that paint. Well, how do they save it? Well, they they only animate certain aspects, and I'm sure you've seen cartoons where like the head 
or the body's staying in one place, but the head is turning. So all they're really animating is the head or the mouth might just be moving. All right. Or an arm is raising and everything else stays the same. That's because of breaks. So these breaks, all Hanna-Barbera characters have collars. All right. All the majority of their humans have this little line, this five o'clock shadow type of thing. George has it. Um, Mr. Spacely has it. Uh, Fred has it. Barney has it. All of them have it. And this was a way to help on animation. So they could, like, let's say I have a picture of Fred here, right? Um, so here's Fred. And what would be separate, let's erase that real quick. What would be separate would be this piece under his nose, right? And then they can animate this moving the cheeks, puffing out while they talk. So that was, that was, a technique they used. So I thought a lot about that design when I was creating Plunger Pup. And I wanted to have these breaks in the character. So I gave him a collar right there so the head could be animated by itself. I made sure to make a break at the waist so I can do the upper body. If, if we look at the arms here, he's got the gloves on. So I could, you know, I mean, most characters have gloves and they're not technically breaks, but I looked at them as breaks because the hand could be animated with me not having to worry about the whole arm and it blended right into the glove. Same thing with the shoulders and the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the underwear right here. Um, you know, so th those were kind of, those are some breaks. For me. So I designed it cause I designed them for animation over, over uh, comics, but I did put them in comics. Now, I really liked that concept of a of a collar, okay, a belt, the underwear, the legs, and the feet right there, right? That whatever. Um, this down here and I'm going to put a circle for the hand because what I'm going to show you is that by creating this simple look and this became my style right every almost every superhero in the plunger pup universe has this look for example one of the characters his name is mighty monkey he was actually the first character I ever created so what I do I remove plunger pups logo I put his logo on it, right? I used this. I kind of came down and I added a cape, right? And I changed his shoes, actually. So don't worry about this line for the boots. Um, when I created Mighty Monkey, I was thought I was parodying Mighty Mouse. So he kind of had these little booties on. And he had these wrist, you know, the, the this little... Um, you know, thing at the end. He's not wearing gloves or anything, but that was that was Mighty Monkey, right? Plunger Pup has a cousin. His name is Hydrant Hound. So what happens? New symbol. So it's a fire hydrant, right? He's got gloves on. He's got his boots. And I added a stripe going all the way throughout his costume and that was hydrant hound okay um i have a i have a uh um a duck his name's mythic mallard so instead of the belt what did i do i turned this into a sash i added another kind of symbol right here right i gave him these kind of gauntlets type of things over here and I turn his boots to this and they have wings on it so he can fly okay and here and this had a chest piece that came over it but do you notice how I just used the same body type and I created three different characters. Um, I learned this actually looking at Hanna-Barbera, not just the idea of the breaks for animation, 
But also, one of my favorite um, artists for Hanna-Barbera was a man named Alex Toth. Alex Toth designed the looks. I mean, he was a well-known comic book artist, but he designed characters like Space Ghost, Birdman, Herculoids, all those, all the, 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 the superheroes um, did Johnny Quest. And, you know, they all had that same look. They all, you know, I just toned mine down. But if we were to just create kind of this rectangular shape, use this rectangular shape so you, they kind of look tough, right? have their neck come out, their body is that upside down triangle that I told you about that makes people look large. And I'm just going to break it off because they, you know. And here are the legs. And they, they went a little bit more realistic on this or more comic book style. Um, and I'm just going to leave these alone. One of the things that was great about Toth's work is that he believed in less is more. All right. He, you know, he went and looked at these things and said, we're only going to put on the screen what's important. I might even have a little too much detail here on, you know, on, on the muscles and stuff. So it was just whatever was important for Toth, right? They'd, they'd show the muscles. They wouldn't show every, every um, rib, you know, part of the rib there. You know, they might show a little piece coming down, you know. But this was the most you would get. And even, um, um, what's his name? Bruce Timm, when he was designing Look at Batman, the animated series, went back to looking at Toth's work as well as um, looking at the old Fleischer Superman cartoons work. And that's how the, the style came to be. Um, so I have this very simplistic character here, all right? And if I was, and this is how I look at drawing. So if I was to look at, whoops, wrong layer. If I was to look at, uh, da, 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 change the color, um, Space Ghost, right? What is Space Ghost? He's got his mask on. He's got his wristbands on. And that's another thing that... Um, and he's got a symbol here. And the cape flies down. Whoops. Um, that's another thing that... Hanna Barbera always did was give their characters wristbands. So, right there, you got Space Ghost, right? What if I was to remove that and put a different type of cowl on him, right? Give him a little belt and maybe a loincloth this time. Still gets the wristbands. They're smaller, but he gets them. And now you have Mitor, the prehistoric superhero. And he's got his. All right. And then he had his cape that came down. And he had his club. So that was my tour. Right. Um, Birdman's a little thinner. But if we look at Birdman, what was it? He had his beak hat, I believe, up here. And he had his mask that is kind of like Wolverine style mask. Oh, he didn't have the bird thing. He had the. It was a helmet and he had the symbol of the bird. Right? And then he had this thing around his neck. Right? Still had the wristbands. And he actually had wristbands around, or, or things around his ankle. And he had his bird wings that came up. So, you know, it's the same thing. What about, uh, who was another one? Um, oh, the Herculoids. Like Xandar. Right? He had that. He had his little piece on there. So I'm, I'm going a little longer than I wanted to on this part, but you can see how he built, how Toth designed these characters to kind of all fit together, to look together. Um, and he used a very basic model sheet. Some he thinned out a little bit more than others, but all the characters had the same construction. 
even the women, the teenagers looked looked the same. So it was a very, very important thing. And that's where my style and influence came from. All right, looking at at these things here. Uh, and, and these cartoons. Han Barbera did it with their animal characters too. So let's create a character from scratch now. Um, I'm going to make my character. Let's do. Hmm, let's do like a, a mouse. So the character is going to be a mouse, right? He's going to have the job that he, let's give him the job as, as a, um, uh, I'm just looking around my room at stuff. Let's make him a, maybe a, uh, I don't know, like a garbage man, maybe. I think that might be fun. And... He's going to be kind of a laid-back character. You know, everything's just kind of cool with him. So I got these three things. I'm going to use this. And, and when we're working professionally, we get what's called a brief. A brief is just kind of a, a little summary of the character. I mean, we could get more, you know, like back, you know, we, you know history and stuff. But no, we, it's usually something like, you need to create a mouse who is a garbage man. He's just kind of this very relaxed character if they don't have a name for him or anything. So I got to think about, is my mouse going to be kind of tall and thin? Is he going to be short and fat? Is he going to be short and thin? Is he going to have a big head, a small head? Well, I kind of think, what, what looks like laid back? So I'm going to kind of have this man, you know, I'm going to put that line of action in. And the idea is that he's going to be leaning right now. I kind of like to get the personality before I do a full a full thing. And, uh, I don't know, maybe his legs will be crossed or, or something. But so I got, I think about the shape for the head, but he's a garbage man, right? So being someone who, who takes out trash, you, you're usually a bit of a, you know, maybe a little stocky or a strong, stronger type. I mean, don't worry. I'm just, I'm just making assumptions here. There are, you know, I've seen thin and heavy set. I've seen them all, but I like to think kind of stocky so I'm going to give him kind of a, a squarish build. So he's a little bit tough of a mouse, but he's still laid back, right? So I'm using the, I'm still using round shapes. So I'm, I'm keeping it kind of boxy. And I'm going to have his hand right there. And this one up, right? And maybe I'll have this leg crossed. And this leg on top, you know, just kind of, kind of out. And I'll have him leaning on a on a garbage can. All right, and we'll put his ears right here. We'll do another one of the same the same mouse, but we'll use a different, not personality, but a different look to him. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the opacity here, so I can see it still. I'm going to draw over it in a different color. So I'm going to have him looking off in this direction. So that's where the guidelines are going to be. And, and uh, nope, don't like that. I kind of want his eyes just to kind of be half closed. Like, you know, he's just kind of enjoying himself right there. I'll put out a snout on him. You know, he's got his piece in there. Maybe I'll even rough it out a little, little tooth. Maybe his hair's combed back, and he's got this, this ear like so. And, you know, I'm not going to put the ear there. I think it'll be better if his ear is kind of going back as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of still keep him a little, you know, that stocky look. So 
I don't know if anyone's asking questions, but um, I'm not seeing them pop up. So if you got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And this leg is going to be up in the front, right? And this leg will be coming down. All right, and he'll have a tail, and so that that's the middle, so the tail maybe is coming out like that. And I haven't given him any, um, haven't given him any uh, clothes yet, because I haven't decided if he's going to to need any. You know, am I keeping him a little bit more of that kind of cartoony mouse, or am I gonna dress him up? Now, if I'm gonna dress him up. Let's turn off that layer real quick. So if I'm going to dress them up, I got to think, you know, um, when most people in the old, you know, older days, they, they, they had uh, like coveralls on um, or they, uh, you know, you see them in jeans, T-shirts, regular clothes all the time. But I'm going to go with the coveralls because I want to give them kind of this uniform, uniform look. And it's also something... You know, maybe I'll give him some cuffs down here. They're going to be, he's going to be wearing some kind of boots. And they got a collar. And here's a little zipper coming down, right? Um, sorry. All right. Um, maybe there's, you know, he's got a name tag on him. Um, maybe there's a design like stripes on these coveralls so that we can just kind of give a little texture to it. Okay. We can even maybe put a hat on them. Little cap. You see, and here he is talking to talking to a friend or something. All right. And I'm just gonna so we know that's the zipper line right there. So that's kind of a laid back version. And he's kind of stocky. He's got a little chubbiness to him. But if he was if he was fat, like a, a heavy set, I wouldn't. The shape I used for his body was very much this. It's like a rounded square or rectangle. If I want to make this guy fat, I'm gonna use that that circle I just made for his head. I'm gonna maybe squash his face a bit. All right, and we kind of maybe want to double chin him up. Hold on, I'm not liking what I did there. So I'm going to come in, and I'm going to make this a little bigger. And let's erase right here. Okay. And now I'm going to give maybe make his nose a little higher. I'm going to maybe add a little bit of a cheek to him over here, so it's kind of puffy. And maybe a couple of lines. And now I've made this fat mouse. Let's give him the hat again. I kind of I kind of like that little hat. We'll give him a baseball cap on this one here. Right? And what I'm doing here is I'm adding a little bit more to the side of his face. And you can see how I've just made him look heavy. And I'm going to use this pear shape. And maybe he'll have shorter legs. And let's do that with the same piece here. I like that foot I made much better, that leg. I want to angle. Whoops. What is going on here? Oh, I chose the wrong layer, uh, wrong tool, sorry. Um, you know, and his arms. His arms could be kind of wider, shorter, and heavier as well. And I'll leave them here. Those are his fingers. And and you could put the coveralls on him again. If he, if he was supposed to be kind of thin, right, I'd, I'd probably go a little taller. So maybe his head might be used kind of a rectangle and maybe a little, uh, maybe a circle here. And I'll put his nose right there and... And he'll have his eyes right here. And because he's so tall and thin, 
you know, not everything's going to stand up the same way. He'll have a he'll have a long neck, and his body is just going to be this long rectangular shape. So I got these three different mice. All, you know, I could, you know, I didn't do it on all of them, but if I used that same expression, you know, they all kind of look a little, whoops, that eyebrow looks a little worried. You want them curved and we could open his mouth and, you know, it adds a little bit more of a relaxed feel. All right. What about if, you know, I've drawn a lot of boys. Let's draw a girl. What if I was to do, and we did a mouse, so we'll do it. We'll choose a different animal. Um, how about a squirrel? All right. Let's do a squirrel. So I'm just going to change my color right now back to a blue so we can see it better. And I'm going to use that same shape, and I'm going to use two shapes for the squirrel. And I'm not and I've already kind of tilted the head because when you draw women, we like to have this what we call an S curve. It's kind of the whole body because there's that hourglass like figure to them. But we're drawing a cartoon animal. It doesn't have to be super sexy. But I can think about the legs of how a cartoon, a female cartoon squirrel would go. You know, and if this arm, let's put this, you know, let's have the arm curve up like so, and maybe this one kind of down and on her hip. Okay. And so I've built this body. Let's start, let's lower the opacity on here, and let's start building a cartoon squirrel. So, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start over here. And I'm going to give her a small nose. Because when we draw women, we like delicate features. So a small nose, and I'm zooming in on here, is going to be a little more delicate of a feature. Um, I'm going to come in. And I'm going to give her that little part of the snout. And then I'm going to give a big mouth over here. Because it's a squirrel with... Maybe, uh, actually, I think that's a little too big. Let's go with small teeth. You could give them big teeth, but it's a girl, so let's go a little. She's a little more delicate. And I'm going to open her mouth. I'm going to have her tongue right here. I'm going to color that in. All right. I'm going to put her eyes right on here. And I'm going to put that there, that there. I'm going to close a bit of it. I'm going to, from this part, I'm going to give her some eyelashes. And this is a little heavy. Her, her would be the right eye to you guys. I didn't mean to make it so heavy. And some eyebrows. She'll have tiny ears, right? And maybe some, I'm not going to give her actual hair. I'm going to use the fur, but maybe I would kind of do something a little more decorative to her hair than just the couple of scribbles I do. And I'm going to come out and rough it up. But I kind of roughed it up a little too much I don't, on, on this side here. I don't want it to be so rough. I want just a little bit of roughness to it and have it come around. Okay. Then I'm going to build off the neck, and the arm is going to come. And I'm going to think about her figure. So I'm just going to curve it in and come down. I'm going to come up here. And one, two, three, and there. And so right off of here where her hand is, I know the hips coming in. And I'm going to give her tiny feet. Again, I'm being very delicate with, with it. And here's her hand. Okay. Also, you know, maybe there's a different color. She's two-tone. Maybe she's got fur going in 
in a different direction. And I can't forget about her tail. So I'm going to zoom out because I like to draw the tail. Kind of thinking about where it would go. Let's, no, I don't want to come in off there. I want, that's too much. I'm going to have it coming kind of off here. And I'd give it a nice curl. And maybe that, you know, part of that um, uh, other fur color will be there. So we have that. Um, you know, I don't like how I curled that either. I'm just going to change up the image a little bit. And again, this is what the eraser is for. Always change stuff up. All right. I'm going to have it out and then I'm going to curl it down over here. And then, again, erase what you don't need. It's getting a nice breeze from outside right now. My windows are open. So you can see how I got this female kind of squirrel right there. There's things I would correct. For example... I'm not happy with, with this leg right here, so I'd want to erase that, fix the hip, fix the leg positioning. Um, again, nothing that, can, you know, nothing that an eraser tool can't, can't take care of. I don't like her thumb. I think her thumb here is too thick for the rest of the fingers. So I'm just going to thin out that thumb. And when you're, and again, when you're drawing women, you want a little bit more um, softer features. So going thin, not heavy lines like I did on that eye over here. Um, but that was just me sketching, uh, cleaning up. It would not, it would not look like that at all. So if I can try to make it just a tad bit softer. I will. All right. That was some guidelines I used to help me out. Okay, so let's do one more character. This time we're going to do a human. And I think we're going to make the character, we'll, we'll make it cartoony. Um, let's make the character, I'm going to do a male. Whoops, why is it raining? Just because... It's quicker for me, and I'll save time right now. We, we're going to make it a male. Um, you, know, we, we, you know, we're here. We like comics. We like cartoons. So let's make it a superhero. And let's give it the powers of... Um, I don't know. Let's see. What? Let, let me look around my room and see. Maybe there's a hero that I like. Um, there's a lot in here. How about we go with magic? That is one of my favorite superpowers. All right. I'm, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a character. And let me change the color. So I can go over it again in in, um, in uh, black and make stuff pop out. So I got to think magic. What represents magic to me? How many um, is he? You know, is he a magician? Is he a wizard? Is he something like a druid type of character? Um, you know, does he have a lot of weapons? Is he young? Is he old? Uh, is he middle-aged? You know, these are all things that need to be taken into consideration. So, I think if I'm saying superhero, he has to have some kind of costume. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I did with my plunger pup character. The I don't even remember what layer I drew it on. Or what was that, too? Oh, I remember. Sorry. Um, so that's Plunger Pup. That's the Plunger Pup costume that I was talking about that was simple that I used for all the characters. So I'm going to draw that. But instead of drawing the, um, 
instead of drawing a dog's head and make it, I'm going to draw a human head. I'm going to keep it simple, kind of rectangular-ish. I want him to have a little bit of, of young appeal to him. So I'm rounding off and softening up his chin. If he was going to be older, I would give him a square jaw. So I'm going to give him a neck. And I'm going to go with that upside down triangle shape to a belt um, to the underwear. And, and let's get his legs in there. And having a standard go-to design is not a bad thing. Um, it makes your work quicker. It's, it's kind of like having a template. And I'm going to put something in his hand here. So I'm going to leave that right here. Okay. So he needs a costume. He's magical. So what part could be magical? Well, if we think of magical characters, my go-to is always Dr. Fate. He's my favorite. He has the helmet of Naboo, which is really where the power, you know, kind of comes from. Then you think Dr. Strange. He's got his amulets and, and, and other uh, just mystic abilities. You look at somebody like Mandrake the Magician, who actually wears a tuxedo and, and uses the idea of um, uh, being a stage magician to kind of hide his presence. Uh, you know, you got Zatanna, who does the same thing in the DC universe. Um, you know, John Constantine, who, who handles magic, you know, he just wears regular clothes. So, oops, hold on one second. I just saw a little warning. My computer's low. All right, I plugged it in. Um, so what kind of character? Well, I think a costume's important. So I'm going to think in the realm of Doctor Strange or Doctor Fate. Dr. Fate usually uses, wears more of a, you know, the, the spandex looking thing. Dr. Strange was always kind of baggier clothes. So again, do I want to go something like that? Well, I'm just going to kind of play with ideas right now. Um, I do like the idea of amulets. So I am going to put some kind of shape right here for an amulet. I'm not sure. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me do this on another layer. Sometimes I like to work that way. Um because I can kind of always go back and play around with different things. And I'm going to change my color so that we can see the difference. So maybe he's got this kind of circular amulet, right? Um, I like the idea possibly of a sash, which is very Doctor Strange. I like the idea of a hood, you know, almost like he's, He's a druid or something. And I don't want to say he's a druid. He's just some form of mystic, you know? So what I got to do is have enough to cover that head I made. And I made it, the head maybe a little too big for this, but it could work. And because he's got a hood, he obviously has some kind of cloak or cape that comes down. And I'm going to draw that out. And a little waviness here. Okay, what about if he's wearing a hood, so he might be shadowed, but I'll worry about that later. So I'm just going to give him no pupils in the eyes, which makes him look more magical, more mysterious. I'm going to put a little nose right there and just something like that. Um, I do like that sash idea which means I might go for baggier clothes, but I think right now I'm not. I think I'm going to go a little more traditional spandex-looking kind of hero. All right. Um, maybe I'll add some kind of wristband gauntlet type of thing to add to his magical abilities here, and that's the underside of it. Um, so his hand would be right here. And I'll have his fingers out like so. And just put a little sparks, like little magics happening. All right. And then I come in and I really sit down and I think 
And what is, does he have a design? Does he have a pattern? I'm just going to do something like that in there. I think what I'm going to do is I think I want to give him kind of low boots, almost like the original uh, Spectres. Where they're kind of just kind of loose like that. Um, I think what I'm also going to do is I want to have a kind of a strap coming down. And down here, he's kind of got this pouch or something. And maybe it holds magical items for him. And... I don't know if it need anything else on him. I might want to do some kind of pattern or decorative thing. Um, I'm going to add some shadow right here. Down to it. Just to the tip of the nose there. And in there. Right? I want to add some kind of some kind of design so maybe i'll just do something as simple as some like straps up here they don't have to be actual straps they could just be a different color to the costume which could happen you know maybe here too i don't know i don't like it on the on the on the legs all right maybe we add a little bit of a magic appearance from the amulet okay and I know this is a sketch, but using that background, whoops, I didn't draw his chin in there because I was using the other piece. So there's a lot I didn't draw in. Um, but we can see this as some kind of young magical character. Right? Um, I had a little shadow under there. And we can think about, you know, then that's when you think about putting that line of action in and just twist those shapes. And one of the things that I do all the time with my, my construction is I break these things down into the simplest forms. So if you look how I did the legs or the body or the head, so I got my shape for the head. I know my body is this kind of upside down triangular shape. So I can just come and twist it, you know? And then I know there's gonna be like a, a belt area and like the waist. And then the legs, if you need, you can use stick figures or just lines right now to, to place in where you want stuff and then build the shapes over them. But I just kind of know ex already and I just kind of work through my shapes. And then I build up the character over that. This could be anybody right now. Um, let's just lower the opacity real quick. And let's, let's do one more thing. I'm going to turn this into an actual comic character right now in my style, of course. All right. So let's get some muscle in here, form of the body. And I can literally make this anyone I want. And though I'm usually, well, I am a DC guy, I am going to go with a Marvel character here. I'm just deciding on which one I want it to be. Uh, Spidey's usually one of my go-to, but I, I'm not in the mood to draw webbing right now. So I think what I'm going to do is, I mean, my favorite Marvel character is a guy named Quasar. Not many people always remember Quasar, but I never feel Marvel ever used him properly. So I think... I do like so many characters. Let's make this, let's erase the ear. I don't know if I'm going to put an ear in. 
let's go with like a classic Iron Man, right? So I'm going to make this Iron Man, but this, you know, like the 80s style Iron Man that I love, you know. You know, the one that almost still has that 60s feel to it when they had that great uh, cheesy cartoon from the 60s. <laughs> and there he is without going into any like real detail on shines and whatnot. Um, you know. There's a classic Iron Man in my style, all because I, you know, I, I kept, I keep things simple. So all my heroes that I draw would look like that. But don't get me wrong. If I have to draw somebody like the Thing, my Thing or the Hulk is not going to, not going to be as simple as that Iron Man, right? If I need to draw the Hulk, I'm going to use that same concept, and I may not see his his uh, neck on this one here, but I'm going to be using those same shapes. Everything is the same. And I'll draw some rectangles for his feet right now, because again, he's that, he's that heavy, that brute that, you know, he's going to break stuff. And the thing would be the same would be the same thing. All right. So, so if this was the Hulk, and again, I'm just going to go on a different layer and change color because I'm going to do the Hulk and the thing. So let's just kind of get a bluish to draw with here. So actually, you know what? It's the Hulk. Let's get a green. Let's go green. All right. So if I'm drawing the Hulk, what's going to happen? His eyes are going to show up in here. I'm going to create that that nose for him and his mouth will be an angry mouth. It'll be open and his teeth will be in here, right? I'll have his hair. And then I'm coming in with the muscles, maybe the and we're going classic, you know, torn pants here coming down. And we draw his toes. All right, so that's the Hulk, right? He fits in the world of Iron Man because I'm using the same idea of that construction. It's the same style, right? Now, I know the thing is a little smaller, but what if I went and let's get, he's the thing, so let's go orange, right? Uh, I hope I pick a good orange here. I'm not the best with colors. So what happens with the thing? We draw in the features of the thing, you know, and he's got his fantastic four undies on. And then what happens here? Let's just start drawing rocks. And I'll, I'm doing it quick. This isn't, I'd probably try to figure out some kind of pattern, you know, for his muscles, you know, his, his chest, how would they look? How would his shoulder look? I like to break things down, and that's one of the reasons I love the having these shapes. Okay. And he's out for clobbering time, right? So when I draw, I think about um, I think about simplicity. And when you're drawing for animation, that's what you want. You want something simple that you can constantly draw over and over and over and over again that it looks the same every time 
when you're drawing for comics, you could put more detail in there, but you still got to think, what are you going to render? I mean, am I going to draw a character like, you know, you look at a character like Superman, right? And I'm not going to draw the whole thing, but I got this quick Superman here. And here he is and his arms out. There he is flying. You got that like Greek god pose going on. But his legs are heading backwards, right? Okay, just something simple. I got that. He wears spandex. That's easy to do. Batman, well, the new Superman, he's kind of more in a detail that, you know, they like to have fun and do designs with. But the original is very spandexy. Same thing with Batman, right? When Batman, you know, back in, what was it, the 70s and 80s, Batman's utility belt was very simplistic, right? It was, it was a belt buckle, and he had these, like, capsule things going on there. Later, did they bring it to pouches, you know, and they might just do some lines like that. Batman the Animated Series, right, was basically that in the 90s. All right. Later, what happens? Then artists like to get detailed and they start drawing the pouches, which is fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I think a lot of it looks pretty, pretty good. I got to just fix that. Sorry, that wasn't looking right to me. And in those pouches, what do they do? They create the lines on how the pouches work. Maybe some even like to get more detailed and start adding wrinkles and whatnot. And it's, it's as detailed as you want to get. How much do you want to, to render? And when I mean render is basically how much do you want to draw ink, color, shade? Like how much do you want to do on that? And don't get me wrong, detail is beautiful. I love, I love looking at some of the details on things. But I do come from less is more. I do come from the idea of let's create a template and let's change that template specifically for certain characters like the Thing or the Hulk who are larger or broader. You know, going back to my style here, let's bring the, whoops, not that back. Let's bring that back. I could, sorry. Um... I could take this image of the thing. Let's remove it, right? Let's go on a new layer above it, right? And we're going to change the color. I don't care. I'm going to go red on this one. And now all of a sudden, who is it? Maybe it's the kingpin. I'm going to give him, uh, you know, all of a sudden. Actually, come out over here, that line, right? Maybe I'll put an ascot on him. I'll do that type of kingpin here. I might change the shape of his head a little bit, right? He's got pants on and now all of a sudden, and I'll give him striped pants. Here is the kingpin from Marvel. All right. What if we remove that and come on, let's dumb down the eyes. And we go to DC now and... Now it's Solomon Grundy, who is this Frankenstein-like zombie character whose clothes don't always fit perfect, right? And they're tight on them. You know. So think about when you're, when you're designing characters, think about keeping it simple. Less is more, at least in my opinion. All right. Um, almost every artist I love comes from the less is more theory. One of my favorites is, well, was Darwin Cook. It still is one of my favorite artists, but he passed away a few years ago. And he was, uh, you know, he had that Alex Toth, you know, less is more style. I mean, just look at the stuff he did. Go read um, Justice League New Frontier. Fantastic book. Um, so, but you'll see that less is more theory there and it makes the characters easy to draw and that stylization adding a little cartooniness to it adds a adds a bit um go look up alex toth it's t-o-t-h and uh you can look at his designs and type in hanna barbera and you'll see the superheroes he created um you can look he drew a great zorro he's done beautiful batman i mean it's all very great simplistic um 
Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just simple. That that's that's really the best way to put it. Um, think about really your characters. Do they need the detail? Can they be less is more? Think about creating a uh, almost like a generic template that will help you always with your characters. And if you need to change it to fit a larger character, a shorter character, a fatter character, so be it. I mean, my females, and I'm not going to go back to drawing now, but the females have a template very much like the men. All right. It's just a different body shape. So that's all I got to say right now on character design. I hope to um, continue this. I don't know if next week, but I will go in and we'll talk a little bit more and we'll actually look at characters next time we do character design. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do next week yet with you guys, but I'll see you next Friday at 1 on the Incredicon on Facebook page. You can find me Mondays and Wednesdays at uh, 1 p.m. on my YouTube page. So just look me up at Michael Gracia. All right, and, uh, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget my website, getintune.net. And you can also check me out on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Michael Grassi. I just opened it up a couple of weeks ago. Um, so there are some rewards up there. And if you want to see some different rewards, let me know. Maybe I'll change it up. All right. You guys have a great rest of your day and hope everyone's staying safe. And I will see you soon.